Yeah, but it's here, right? Do you remember maybe the missing phone or not? Can you hear me? Is it just work? Now? Okay. So, uh, now we're going to start the last lecture of this workshop. I am Alexander Krukov, um, security engineer at Sertora, and I'm going to present you uh, one of the most uh, difficult and confusing features of CVL, Ghost. Uh, what in general do we think about the ghost when we hear this word? Usually it's just like the spirit of a dead person, uh, sometimes represented as a pale that comes to, to alive people. Uh, like, usually it looks like this cute ghost on the picture, but we are just scientists, you know, and we don't believe in, the, in this type of ghost, so we need more scientific approach. And uh, it already exists in computer science. For example, you can read the article Elimination of Ghost Variables in Program Logics, uh, where people explain uh, the notion of ghosts. And they also like, have an example, but with the uh, Java modeling language. And they say that. Uh, uh, one second. Nurit. I think something wrong with our. Uh, with the front, with the font type, because it should be visible. Do we have a line version? You want to bring your computer? Uh, probably. So, okay, now we're ready to continue. And in that article, people say that in brief, the ghost variables is like a signable variable that doesn't appear in the executable code, but only in assertions and specification. And the main point of the ghost is that they shouldn't interfere with the values of uh, normal program variables or take control over the flow of the program. Uh, like, for example, this like silly code, um, just like, it does nothing, but let's say we have two variables, one and two, and in the function foo, there are like assignments. Uh, so, and we know that there should be like implicit correlation of these variables based on the iteration that we are doing. So we introduce the iter, like iteration uh, ghost, every time we increase it in our for loop, uh, then we check like this kind of an invariant in just like a brief overview. In the Sertora, we say that the ghosts are uninterpreted function. What does it mean? Well, they have no interpretation associated with them, like a black box. Uh, let's say you give some input, but get just a random output. You don't know what, what to do with them. Uh, but why do we need them? So first of all, uh, in CVL, we cannot access uh, private and internal variables without changing uh, their visibility. And if you have really principled clients and they say, no, I don't want any changes in my code at all, uh, then you can use Ghost to keep track of those, of those variables. Another thing to use them, just to check some data. For, for example, you have uh, like in ERC20, you have like balances, many balances, and the total supply. They should be correlated. But let's say you don't uh, trust uh, underscore like total supply variable. So you can check it with the ghost. And check implicit correlations, uh, whatever you want. And uh, the rest is limited with your creativity or what you can think about it. Uh, the first step in the ghost is just like the way to define it. 
The first one is the ghost for one variable. Let's say we want to keep track of the total supply. Then we use the keyword and then we say the type, uint256, then the name. Uh, for mappings, uh, it looks exactly the same and the mapping we define them as, a, as in the solidity. And I want to say that you kind of lucky uh, that we have the workshop right now because around two months or three months ago, we introduced the new syntax for ghost and now it's more uh, like it looks more like a solidity. So it's easier to understand. Like two, three months ago, um, we're going to suffer here to explaining you and you're going to suffer to understand how it works. Uh, but uh, by itself, like, as I said, nothing to do this, like random values. Uh, we don't know what to do with this. Uh, the first thing that we can use uh, axioms. There are two types of them. The first one, the basic axiom, it will uh, it ensures that the condition this axiom will hold during the whole uh, just like run of your rule or invariant. It will hold for everything. For example, here uh, on the top uh, axiom, uh, we want to ensure that all balances um, will be greater than uh, 10. So we say for all, it's the keyword, like axiom for all is the keyword for all addresses. Each of them is greater than 10. Another axiom that we have uh, is used for initial state. Uh, it's uh, the state exactly after constructor was called. When you verify invariants, you have uh, invariant in state and uh, and uh, uh, preserved, like uh, invariants exactly after constructor and uh, any random state after it. So in in state axiom helps exactly to verify the invariant after the constructor was called. Uh, most of the time, uh, we use uh, like we set it to zero most of the time, like because first of all, it's uh, default value in solid for solidity. And uh, most of the contract, they don't assign many balances or something like this. But if you wish, you can assign it to 10, to anything you want, any specific address, uh, like whatever you want. But still, it looks not expressive enough. We still, like, it's really hard to understand what we can do with it. And then we need a second uh, feature. It's called hooks. And uh, again, we're going to refer to, like, several real-life uh, uh, definitions, of course, it's not uh, the second or the third one because we are not the sportsmen or musicians, but the first definition can give you the kind of idea what hook does because it says a curved device used for catching and holding things. So in our case, the hook, um, it's like like the ghost, uh, like, I don't know, uh, like use the hook to catch the, the value from the solidity variable and to, I don't know, we can use it for assignment, for example. In Sertora, we say that the hook are like the, gl uh, the glue that pieces together program behavior and uninterpreted function or ghosts uh, by providing a way to hook into certain program behavior and update ghost relations to reflect that program behavior. Uh, there are several patterns, uh, like which hooks we can use and how. For example, um, it starts with the, all the time, it starts with the same keyword hook. Then there are two options as load and as store. The first S refers to the storage. So in as load, you can assume as a getter, as store as a setter. So in as load, we can retrieve some uh, data and uh, just like it's kind of one time uh, getter. I prefer to call it like this. And uh, you can require that the, your ghost will follow it. Like I will show you later an example. Why do we need it? Another type as store. Every time when uh, the value in, for example, mapping updated, your ghost can be updated using as store. And later I will show you example of usage all of these features that I'm explaining you now. Then the syntax is quite simple every time, but uh, depends on if you use as load and as store, the order can be a bit different. I have no idea why the order is different. And I just realized that I want to ask this question to our developers after this uh, presentation, this lecture. Maybe Norit can tell me why, why is it like this? So S, so both are... Um, Order of like uh, the pattern and the value uh, and the variable, like why is yes. different? So S load is like, a, so think about this as an, uh, it's the bytecode commands, right? And S load, um, it, Right. 
So s load and s store are the byte co byte uh, bytecode commands, and it's I think it's the order of first of all in the bytecode, but it also makes sense. S load is like an assignment to v, right? V gets the value that is now inside of pattern. So there was a load command. Yeah. yeah, so in general, it's more correlated to the bytecode, like from the left-hand side, right-hand side, as Norit said. If you're interested in a more detailed way, maybe you can ask Norit after it, like, to get more explanation. So, uh, continue about the syntax. After sload and sstore, uh, okay, after sload, uh, there is a type of uh, the variable and its name. It can be named, it can be different, not exa exactly we. This is what we get from the pattern. The pattern, it's uh, the variable from solidity. It can be mapping, array, whatever you want. Then the storage is another keyword. Initial intention was Initial intention was uh, to play with storage, memory, call data, but for now it's only storage. So I don't just remember it's another keyword that you always use. And in curly brackets, you can do whatever you want. Any assignment, usually we just assign the values to the ghost. And east uh, add store pattern on this uh, the second one, um, it's pretty the same, but another order. And also uh, the add store has one more interesting feature because you see there is like uint v, but in the um, parenthesis, there is uint v old. It means that uh, with s store um, pattern, uh, we can track uh, the pre and post value of the variable, of solidity variable. Let's say uh, you have uh, balance five, and then somebody transfer you five tokens, and you got 10. So in this case, v old will be five, and we will be 10, like the pre state and the post state after the before and after transfer. Uh, and before we go to like example, how to use it, just a quick reminder of ERC20 data structs. We have mapping balances, allowances, and variable total supply. Based on them, I will show like different examples how to use it, and then more advanced things like with the structs, uh, and it will help you with other with V3 token. Uh, there are two examples of hooks. The first one, s -load. As we see, it starts with a hook um, keyword, then a slot, then the type of returning value, and then the pattern. In our case, it's underscore balances, the mapping of balances of all users. Then in uh, square brackets, the, the keyword key refers to mapping. If you want to use, for example, array, then you will write index. Then the type of the variable of this like argument parameter, and then a, a name, again, it can be anything, and finally, the last word, storage. Then, uh, in order to ensure that the value in your ghost is correct, we require that it's, cor it's, it's exactly the same as balance. In S store, it's a bit different. I mean, again, the order is different. Firstly, the pattern, then old new value. The, the example with balances is not the best one, but a bit later, I will show you how we can use both of these uh, like all the new values. So now let's see how it how it works, if it's really correlated and if the job that we did is really good. Uh, it will be the simple rule, who changed balance. Uh, in order to show you the correlation, I also keep track of the data from, from original solidity uh, mapping with the balance of getter. And uh, after run, we got a result that the balance was changed by transfer from and transfer functions. Uh, we don't consider here mint and burn because they're internal functions. So the prover uh, doesn't call them. If you will do it in public, of course, there will be changes. But for now, we have a contraexample, so it's enough for this, uh, for this lecture. Here, we can see the call trace and the results. Let's say balance before and uh, the ghost balance before, they're equal, like 15. Then uh, goes balance after the and balance after they also correlated, 18. 
And so we assume the transfer was like three tokens. This is what we can see in the counter in the call trace. So everything works correctly for now. We didn't fail to write a ghost. Why why it's important that we didn't fail? Sometimes the ghost can see can look like everything is okay, everything works, and your rule or invariant will be verified. Uh, but it's not really correct. Sometimes uh, like small mistakes can break everything, and you won't get any errors, compilation errors, or anything. So it's good if you just wrote a ghost. Uh, and the rule using or rule or invariant using this goes to insert like some silly bug, maybe comment out one uh, line that sh that have to break it and to see if it really works. Uh, another ghost example, just to sh that just to show you how it looks like, it's uh, with the total supply variable. Nothing special except that after total supply. Uh, total supply variable, when you use it as a pattern, you don't need any brackets, you don't need, you don't need anything. Uh, then another one, it's with uh, allowances, because it's like mapping in mapping. Again, just as an example. Uh, Ghost uh, looks like solidity, mapping, assign mapping, everything is like familiar for us. Then in this state axiom, instead of one for all, we write two for alls, if you want. If you want, uh, like, you want, like, you can skip the second one and the first one, like depends how you, what you want to do. Uh, and uh, the sum, like the pattern looks uh, also the same. You add another pair of uh, square brackets and another key address spender, for example, after it. Nothing, uh, there's nothing interesting, but I wanted like to avoid the questions like what happens if we have several mappings? If you have mm, like more, more nested, nested, nested mapping, it will be exactly the same. Will be one more mapping inside, then one one more pair of uh, square brackets. And uh, as I said, uh, like more, like it's more real life example for solvency rule. When we want to check that the total supply is like updated correctly. In order to do it, we create a ghost, total sum ghost, and inside this ghost we uh, uh, make a sum of all user balances. Uh, like in the hook, in the body of the hook is the second line. And this is an example where we use both variables. We total sum ghost equal to total sum ghost plus balance minus all balance. Uh, why it's important to do it exactly in this way? So an example, total supply is equal to 100 and your balance is five tokens. So these five tokens already included in this 100 total of total supply. Somebody, I don't know, just like, transferred you five more tokens, now you have 10. So the balance will be 10. And if you just like, wait a second. I think a better example will be, will be with Mint, even like, sorry, let's replay it. Like again, your total supply 100, uh, total supply 100, your balance five, some like in you Mint, like, I don't know, one token. Uh, then the total supply should be 101, but without all the balance, it will be 106. That's why we need firstly to add, like we, it, the order doesn't matter, but we add the new balance and we subtract the old one. So to ensure correct uh, update, because otherwise it will be greater, than, well, it, it will be unrealistic. And, and this is like a simple invariant we call it solvency. I, maybe you already saw it or just at least discussed. So uh, total sum goes that I already showed you and total supply goes, it looks okay. But as I, as I said, we prefer to check it. So in uh, function underscore transfer, I just commented, commented out one line and we see that exactly two functions, transfer from and transfer were affected by it. So it means that everything works, that uh, we don't have the false positive results, because as I said, if you try it a bit uh, wrong, you won't get any compilation error probably, and result will be okay, you will be happy, but it's like false, false positive thing, it's not good. And uh, like the last thing that I wanted to mention is like how to work with structs. One more time, a reminder how the AVV3 token looks like. It's, uh, I think, from the base token even, but it's used in the even in, in V3. 
So here the map mapping balances uh, like from adjusted points to the struct where we have balance, delegate pro proposition balance and etc. There will be no, uh, not much difference except that instead of square brackets, if you refer to struct, you should, uh, you should type dot and then uh, the name of the struct uh, variable. In our case, balance. That's the only difference. And you got the same access, you can do, the rest will be exactly the same. Well, well, well that's it. Uh, I think if you have any more questions uh, about the ghost or anything, I will be happy to answer. And also like during like the exercise, you can try to implement something and to see how it works because the topic is really complicated and uh, like one lecture is not enough. You also need to try by your own. This is like based on my experience. Like, thank you. Thanks everyone for listening.